Visit the campus of any top American university. This is the University of California, Berkeley. And the racial diversity of students can be striking. <laughs> Partly, it's a reflection of America's diversity. But it also reflects the desire among ambitious students from around the world for an American education. More than 690,000 foreign students came to the United States to study this past year. Nearly 105,000 of those came from India, and nearly 128,000 came from China. And foreign students often excel, earning more than half the doctorates awarded by American universities in math, computer science, and engineering. We've been over a land of immigrants. We've brought in the best people from all over the world all the time. Vivek Wadwa, now on the faculty of three American universities, Harvard, UC Berkeley, and Duke, came from India to the U.S. as a graduate student and says the immigrant story has been the same for centuries. Whether they came on the Mayflower or Air India, they bought one-way tickets over here. There was never an option of going back home because this was the only land of opportunity. Historically, most foreigners who studied in America ended up staying. Five years after graduation, 92% of Chinese who came here as students are still here and 81% of Indians. The rest of the world has long suffered a brain drain as so many good brains came here. Google's co-founder, Sergey Brin, came from the Soviet Union. Pierre Omidyar, who started eBay, is Iranian, born in France. Jerry Yang, co-founder of Yahoo, is from Taiwan. Vined Kosla, co-founder of Sun Microsystems, is from India. Wadwa studies immigrant entrepreneurs in high tech. <laughs> immigrant founded companies employed half a million workers in 2006 in the tech sector, just in the tech sector alone. But now a reverse brain drain is underway as many top foreign students are taking their degrees and going back home, particularly to booming economies in India and China. We did a survey in uh, uh, September 2008 we found was that only 10% of the Chinese uh, students in the United States want to stay permanently. China is working hard to get American-trained scholars to return. Chinese officials came to Los Angeles to show students and professors at UCLA oh. a sparkling new Chinese science park. This is a new high-tech hub that holds promise for miracles. China needs more and more high-tech people. For James Yi, with his new UCLA PhD in math, China's growing research and development is beckoning. A lot of uh, jobs positions disappeared in the United States, and more and more students with advanced degrees prefer to go back. Even some long-established and successful immigrants are packing up and going home. We are grateful to the education we received. We are grateful to the generosity of the people in the United States. Xi Ying Gong earned his PhD in molecular biophysics at Johns Hopkins. A naturalized American citizen, he was a professor at Princeton for more than a decade. But now he's back in China, leading the brand new School of Life Sciences at Tsinghua University in Beijing. If China can maintain this growth rate in both quality and quantity, China probably will overtake the United States in 20 years as the most advanced science and technology country in the world. Xi Ying Gong didn't go home empty-handed. How many of you have received their education in the U.S. and then chose to come back to China? <laughs> he recruited more than a dozen postdoctoral scientists educated in America to return to China with him. Now we have the, the, most, the best and the brightest who came here who are taking what they've learned from us back to their home countries and they're going to compete with us. When President Obama honored math and science educators, he acknowledged the importance of nurturing the next generation of researchers and engineers. Our future depends on reaffirming America's role as the world's engine of scientific discovery and technological innovation. Among those receiving awards at the White House was Professor Frank Bayless of San Francisco State University. His solution to the departure of so many smart foreign students is to find more smart American students. To fill that void, we obviously need to look at the domestic pool. Bayless runs a program at San Francisco State that supports low-income and minority students whose potential in math and science may not have been realized. 
The program has helped 22-year-old Ignacio Lopez Pena accomplish things he never imagined. These guys lit a fire under you. <laughs> they did, and I, they, they kept the fire going. He grew up being told science and math would be tough for him. It's kind of funny that now I find myself studying biophysical chemistry, which is kind of a union of all these sciences. This past fall, he started in a PhD program, one of a growing number of San Francisco State grads who once seemed unlikely candidates for higher education. Typically first generation in college, and um, they may or may not have come in well prepared. There's a lot of people with potential that we've been overlooking. Right. With financial support from the National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation, Bayless gets the students involved in federally funded research projects. As well as getting close attention from professors, the students get paid for helping with high-level research. Are you going to do a control or are you going to do a 24 I'm going to hours? do a control today. Good. Earning an income while they learn is important to those with lots of promise, but not much money, like Damon Robles. Well, I'd probably be waiting tables or, or cooking or something of that nature, bartending, something like that. He's 33 years old and a one-time high school dropout who became a father at 16. But with the help available at San Francisco State, he got a degree in physical chemistry and is now a Ph.D. student. I could have fallen into the cracks. What's it been like when you tell a, tell a student here, you, you can quit work at the pizza place? Yeah. We've got a position for you. You, you can imagine it. I just had a couple walk in and say, I got straight A's. I've never gotten that before because I had the opportunity just to study. As more and more top foreign students decide to head home, schools like San Francisco State figure the answer to the reverse brain drain is to make sure good American brains don't go down the drain.